Uh, the International Space Station, by design, is meant to involve scientists from all over the world in doing research on this unique asset. In the 15 years of continuous human habitation of the station, more than 1,700 experiments have been done by researchers representing 83 different countries. One of the organizations behind those numbers is the Center for the Advancement of Science in Space, or CASIS. And this morning, we're joined by Dr. Michael Roberts, the Deputy Chief Scientist at CASIS, to learn more. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Pat. We're push the button, and then we'll, everyone you, can hear Thank you, Pat. It's good you. to be here today. <laughs> uh, Ch CASIS was chosen by NASA back in 2011 to manage the International Space Station National Laboratory. Quickly, tell me what a national laboratory is, but, but how is CASIS working to fulfill that mission? So national laboratories are facilities that are designed to support research and technology development interests in the United States. There are several that operate here on the ground, but there's only one that operates in low Earth orbit, and that's the International Space Station National Lab. CASIS' role in supporting that is that we help to manage and provide access to that national laboratory for any U.S.-based investigator that can benefit from the unique environment of space. The, I've checked the website, your website. It says that CASIS is responsible for inciting the imagination of entrepreneurs and scientists while creating awareness of the national lab research. Give us a couple of examples of how you go about doing that. Certainly. So one of the goals in creating and designating the U.S. operating segment of the International Space Station as a national laboratory was to enable access for new communities of users. So NASA obviously continues to support research and technology development on the station, but CASIS has a portfolio which is slightly different than that of NASA's. We seek out cust companies that have reasons for performing research in that unique environment that can benefit product development. We also support companies such as pharmaceutical companies that utilize the unique aspects of living in microgravity. In addition to affecting the crew, the life living in, in that environment also affects model organisms. So there are opportunities for pharmaceutical companies to study drugs that combat, can combat some of the effects of living in space environments, such as muscle atrophy and, and bone mineral density loss, but things that translate as human diseases here on Earth. To get you to expand on that, that phrase of model organisms, we're, we're talking about organisms that are being used to stand in for people. Is Absolutely right? right. So there are some types of experiments that humans don't like to be test subjects for. <laughs> and there are also organisms that have much faster life cycles than humans do so that they can undergo a much longer term exposure to the microgravity environment in terms of their life cycle. So we frequently use fruit flies, worms, and things like that so that we can learn about the effects of the life and microgravity environment on the biology of the system. And those organisms, although they're not extremely closely related to humans, they do have genes and systems that behave in the same way. And you were mentioning some of the different kinds of uh, organizations that CASIS is working with. A lot of that is, is commercial businesses, people who are wanting to use the space station to improve their products. That's exactly right. So we, uh, we approach a very uh, broad swath of, of interest in the United States. We work with companies who have products in development or have interest in fundamental research and technology development, utilizing both the shirt sleeve environment inside the station as well as access to the external environment outside the station. We also have in our portfolio investigators who are sponsored by other government agencies. So Department of Defense, Department of Energy, National Institutes of Health, a variety of other government agencies who operate their own national labs here in the United States see the value in having access to the spaceflight environment, and they simply can't recreate that environment in the national laboratories that they operate here on the ground. A part of CASIS' job is to help these people physically get their stuff to space, right? It is, it is. So uh, part of our mission is enabling that access, and we do that by facilitating communication between the researchers who are uh, typically new to space. They're used to being able to do research in the laboratory down the hallway. So we put them in contact with implementation partners who can describe for them and share their experiences and how to do science in the harshness of space if they're working outside the station or how to package their biology if they want to work inside the station. We also work closely with the launch providers in order to maximize that access to the station. 
along with working with these companies and, and the variety of different experiments, there's an educational outreach component of CASES' mission, too. Tell me about that. There is, Pat, and that's one of the most exciting parts of our mission. So every principal investigator that we bring on board through CASES to have access to that national lab is also charged with helping us to develop a, a STEM, mission, STEM mission. So we certainly recognize and acknowledge the excitement of working in space, and that's a great, great way to reach out to uh, a new community of investigators who may be in kindergarten, elementary school, high school, or already working at a university. So we participate in a variety of formal education programs, such as the Student Space, space Flight Experiments Program. We work with one of the commercial providers, NanoRacks, who has a very uh, robust education program for middle school and high school level. And then again, we also engage with the companies, the commercial entities that we bring on board to help them develop and support a STEM mission. Because most of the companies we work with are truly interested not only in improving the quality of the research and technology development that's of interest to them and their product development, they're also genuinely interested in being able to reach out to to uh, the youth and, and show that there are varieties of opportunities in that space environment for them as well. Is it hard to get these scientists or these businesses interested in using the space station? It's really not. That, that first phone call, uh, that first communication is sometimes an interesting one because some of, the, uh, some of the customers that we developed weren't aware that we had an international space station <laughs> or that there was an opportunity uh, for them to have access to that environment. But once they understand what the capabilities are and the investments that we as a nation have made in, in building that laboratory and and completing it so that it can now operate truly as a national laboratory, they become engaged very fast. And typically it starts as a slow burn and then begins to grow to a big fire once everyone in the company realizes the opportunities that are available to them. What's on the horizon for cases now? It's all very good. So we're uh, certainly, I'm glad to be here with you today on the anniversary of Zaria. You know, it's, it's hard to imagine that only 17 years ago the the first shiny object that became the International Space Station was launched into space. But the horizon, I think, is very bright. We're uh, actively engaged with a variety of companies and other government agencies, as well as academic institutions. There's a lot of interest now in partnering across each of those diverse communities to do science in the International Space Station National Lab. Good luck, and, uh, and thanks for bringing us up to date on it. Thank you very much, Pat. Dr. Michael Roberts is the uh, Deputy Chief Scientist for the uh, for CASES, the Center for the Advancement of Science in Space.